I reflect on my first two days as a speaker and participant at the CMED conference in episode 20 of Agile Digital Business. I heard some very interesting population statistics a couple of days ago at this conference that could have a tie to what we're seeing in trends in the voice platform. This episode is recorded on the move with my Insignia lavalier mic, my iPhone, and the Boss Jock app on my phone. So you may hear a bit of air handling noise and construction work in the background. I'm recording this episode of the show in my hotel room and have turned off the fan in the HVAC system, but I can't control the traffic noises outside my window or the hallway noises. In fact, I just learned yesterday from a fellow conference speaker and participant, Jerry Stenger. He's the Director of Program Development and Innovation at the University of St. Thomas that there is an app I can use to help filter out the ambient sound. So I'm going to be checking into that before I do the next recording using this mobile setup. I'll also work on using my new app, Backpack Studio, which is the replacement for the Boss Jock app. I was going to use it for this episode, and when I started using it, I thought, oh, I'd really better watch some YouTube videos or something to get myself more up to speed on it or it's gonna take me forever (laughs) to record this episode. So I went back to the Boss Jock app and that's what I'm using to record and edit this episode for you here in my hotel room. For the recording and editing of the next episode of Agile Digital Business, I'll be back in our music studio in a future weekend so you'll hear a change in the sound quality. That's a much more controlled environment for recording podcast episodes and doing the editing. So while it's fun to be doing this remotely, I do look forward to being back in the studio. I want to introduce myself. I am Vicki Maris, author, speaker, and digital marketer focused on helping businesses prepare for the voice platform. I'll share a quick description of the show for those of you who are listening to the show for the first time. And if you are returning and have already been listening, thank you so much for doing that. Welcome, and I really appreciate each and every one of you who are here listening right now. Season two of Agile Digital Business is focused on presenting information about voice platform tools, voice interface strategy, and voice first search behaviors of our customers so that you can be incorporating voice into your marketing strategies. If you aren't currently addressing the consumer's use of voice first in your marketing, you need to be building that into your plans. On a broader level here on the podcast and in my conference talks, I explore uses of digital voice assistance and how to be marketing in a voice first world, as well as ideas for your social media engagement to help you interact with your customers and stakeholders. We need to be meeting customers in their moment of inquiry, whether that is through voice search or other forms of search. My goals for Agile Digital Business include connecting you with relevant resources and experts in voice first, voice search, digital assistance, business innovation, marketing, digital transition of content, social media engagement, and back in season one, I was focused on the design of online learning experiences. Today I'm at the CMED conference, or Conference on Management and Executive Development. It's being held in Austin, Texas. I wanted to spend a few minutes reflecting on topics in the sessions that I've been attending. I just finished yesterday speaking on a panel in a concurrent session where I shared background about one of the executive education programs that I represent for the university. We had some really fun conversation, in particular about relationship marketing. During the Q&A, I recommended Mark Schaefer's new book, Marketing Rebellion, May the Most Human Company Win. I was also excited to learn that a few of the universities represented in the room have podcasts. I know I'm biased, but I am such a believer in a podcast as being a fantastic way to provide content for clients and prospects of your programs. 
It's a way for me to share content with you, as well as to get it to stick in my own mind better. As a lifelong learner who loves to teach others, it's important to me that I not let the nuggets of wisdom and insight drift away into the pages of a notebook or an iPad, never to be viewed again after I leave a conference. I often will create a short video for my YouTube channel, LinkedIn profile, Twitter handle, or Facebook page to reflect on key takeaways. But I also want to share a few takeaways here with you in the podcast. I have a longer interview scheduled with Ali Alamori, whom you heard in episode 19 if you've been listening to the show. That was the episode right before this one. It was after he had participated in an executive education program where I led a session about leadership in a digital era and the topic of preparing for the voice platform in particular. Another program participant, Bobby Covey, also spoke with me on the mic. His episode is on the agenda for the next few weeks of the show. Kane Sims, who is podcast host of VUX World, will be talking with me next week and I'm getting a conversation scheduled with my colleagues, Scott and Susan Westwater, who run the agency Pragmatic Digital. Oh my goodness, I am just so excited about this topic of voice and about all of the interesting guests who have agreed to chat with me on the show. It's exciting to me to be at this milestone of episode 20 for the podcast. I started out the show a couple years ago talking about online courses and learning experience design, which was my focus at the university at the time. But after a slight career shift, I put the podcast on hold for about a year as I got my feet on the ground and a new topic of interest began to unfold. It was when I was putting the marketing plan together to let people know about the audiobook version of my latest book that I started asking questions of our Amazon Alexa about my book and found out that I needed to learn how to put that information at Alexa's virtual fingertips. She initially could not respond to my questions about my book because she didn't know about it, so she does now. (laughs) Season two of the podcast is my journey of learning about the voice platform and sharing that information with you so that you could be preparing to meet your customers at their point of inquiry. I love to learn more about how our customers are using their voices first in search. And I love sharing that with you. Okay, let me take a few minutes to share with you several of the interesting takeaways from the CMED sessions of the first couple of days of the conference. The opening keynote with David Cooperwriter was fantastic. David is co-author, along with Diana Whitney, of the book, Appreciative Inquiry. Have you read that book? He's an author of other books as well, but I mention the Appreciative Inquiry book here as it's one I've used for the foundation of a session that I've taught on that subject of Appreciative Inquiry, and I really, really love that book. The concepts have helped me keep a positive focus in the way I interact with colleagues at work, in the podcasting space and students I work with on our farm when we're training the llamas. I was inspired on Friday to reread the book after hearing him speak at the conference. He spoke of the work of Barbara Fredrickson of the University of North Carolina. And in my notes, I captured the following quote, quote, as people cultivate more hope and joy, we become more intelligent and we get more creative, end quote. Another quote I wrote down is, quote, the more we touch hope, it changes the actual structure of the neuron patterns and can even change bio patterns that otherwise would lead to heart disease, end quote. So he's talking about positivity and how it can really affect our health in a positive way. He shared statistics about the world population growth and how trends are showing that more are moving into the middle class group. In terms of overall population, it's expected that there will be 9.7 billion on the planet by 2050. 
In data from Brookings, David told us that one person escapes extreme poverty every second. Five people per second are entering the middle class. The rich are growing too, but at a slower rate of one person every two seconds. Here's a quote from David Cooper Ryder, quote, Middle class drive demand in a global economy, and middle class are far more demanding of their governments, end quote. He said that two-thirds of consumption will come from the middle class. Compared to today, the middle class will add 1.7 billion more people to their numbers by 2030. I'm going to add a side note here. I'm predicting that this is an indicator of how important it is for your company's products and services to be able to be found on voice search. If this very large group of consumers is going to be driving demand, combine that with using their voice first in search, then we need to be showing up in their searches. David also shared with great feeling that the number of people living in extreme poverty around the world is decreasing by 217,000 people per day, and that 92% of the world's children have access to education. That's compared to only 40% of children just 20 years ago. Following the keynote, I attended a concurrent session about the technique of reflection in the executive education classroom by Dr. John Branch of the University of Michigan. He shared his model of learning design. The participants in the room had a very interesting discussion about reflection and instructional as well as technology tools for conducting moments of reflection. In honor of that session, I would love to have you pause this episode, as long as you're not driving or doing a workout at the moment or moving in some way, shape, or form, and write a key takeaway from this episode that you can share in your social media. Please include the hashtag, hashtag Agile Digital Biz, in your tweet or post so that we can read each other's takeaways and share them out further. I would also love it if you left me a voicemail using the SpeakPipe widget that's on my website at the contact form. That's https colon forward slash forward slash vickimaris.com forward slash contact. The keynote session I attended yesterday was done by Dr. David Flint. His company is the Value Creation Company. As an opener, he played a video of the song The Company Way from the musical How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. It's a pretty hilarious duet by the mailroom manager in the musical and he's, and the lead in the show, uh, Pierpont Finch. The music warmed my heart personally as that was a musical I was in during my senior year of high school. If you've not seen the musical or the movie, I highly recommend it. David used that funny song to spur our discussion about what company even means and how to create value and rareness as part of your value proposition and to be on the alert for eroding factors that could take away from the value and the rareness of your company or the project that you're working on. We worked through questions related to his V-Real model while in small groups. It was a really interesting session. And then in the concurrent session before the lunch, I participated as a speaker in a panel discussion about programs for development of executives in management and leadership topics. I got so energized in the sharing of ideas, especially during the question and answer session at the end of that concurrent. As I'm sure you know, networking with other participants, it is always a huge value add at a conference. A lot of that took place during the breaks and the lunch yesterday. I am just brimming with ideas. I know that's probably a shocker. I can actually see my husband rolling his eyes right now. Sometimes he'll say to me in the morning, could we maybe just wait till like 6.15 before you start sharing the ideas of the day? <laughs> Sorry, Scott. 
The keynote after lunch was an interesting session by Lauren C. Miller, who is a leadership coach and instructor with Carnegie Mellon University. She had several very intriguing stories that stemmed from her coaching of an MBA student. The focus was on human resilience and our energy management and the conundrum we all have of figuring out when it might be the right time to make a change of direction or redefine our goals or to rest or to forge ahead towards our original project or life goals. She facilitated a discussion around those subjects and shared a few applicable tools. I had a conversation with friends around the table last night just before we were leaving for dinner and asked them what they felt like was their most valuable takeaway from that particular session. And the consensus was the six word story tool that she shared with us towards the end of her talk about reframing a situation. That one was a particular gem. As I think of some of our group discussion from yesterday and the use of this podcast as an example. What the podcast needed, in my estimation, was a partial pivot from its original topic. Since I have done that change of direction with it, I have been so extremely energized to share information with you. It literally excites me. It gives me energy to share each upcoming episode. And it actually pains me to have to wait until a weekend to have time to carve out, to create and record content for you. That's why I'm recording this in this mobile way for you so that I don't have to wait till the following weekend. As a digital marketer and relationship marketer, this topic of voice that has my focus here in season two is a big one. There is a lot of content out there about voice app development and the tech side of things but not a lot for the person who is new to the topic of voice about how to make a shift in our organizations to prepare for it. That is what is driving me to glean content for you and to process it for you and deliver it here in this show. If you're finding it helpful, I really would appreciate it if you would leave a rating and review for the show in Apple Podcasts, or better yet, use the share function in your podcast player and share an episode of the show with a friend who listens to podcasts or put it out on your favorite social media channel. Thank you for listening to episode 20 of Agile Digital Business. If you'd like to give a shout out to my husband, Scott, who I just mentioned a few moments ago, Scott Greeson, who creates the amazing music beds for my podcast, please check out his latest album, Riverside, on your favorite digital music player. You can find his tunes, and I'll list a few of them here. If I Had a Train, Suburban Boy, Moped Man, At the Riverside, Tecumseh, and many others. He has several albums. And two that we wrote together. On, and they, these two are on his most recent album, Riverside. Cutback Blues and Minnesota. They are all out at YouTube, iTunes, Amazon, Pandora, Spotify, and other digital locations. All right, now let's go out and teach, inspire, and connect.